Good morning. My name is Patrick Brown. Uh, I'm a new DDOT employee for the district. Uh, I'm a heavy equipment operator for uh, pavement marking. I want to thank everybody for being here. I want to thank the uh, mayor for the new project for pavement marking. And without further ado, Ms. Mouth. Thank you. That's a great introduction. Uh, lately, I've been bringing the rain wherever I go, so let's talk quickly. Uh, I'm very happy to be in, in Ward 6 uh, with, with all of you, uh, with Councilmember Allen and our Ward 6 neighbors. I'm joined by uh, DDOT Director Jeff Marudian and members of our DDOT team. Uh, and I wanted to be here this Thursday as part of our Back to Basics Week, talking about basic government services that improve the lives of DC residents. Oftentimes, people won't, don't think about these services because um, one of our 30,000 employees is doing them as part of their day-to-day -day jobs. Uh, today, we are here uh, at King Greenleaf to focus on an issue that affects every neighborhood in every part of our city, and that is pedestrian safety. Uh, so we know that as our city has grown, uh, we have people going out, walking, biking, driving, scootering, uh, living, working, dining, partying uh, in places where they didn't do those things even 10 years ago. Uh, so we have to make sure that our transportation system is keeping up with our residents. We see this all over Ward 6, for example, uh, with these new activities and mo new movements. So we are very uh, focused on how to adapt our roads and sidewalks and policies uh, to adapt to safer streets. And one way we're doing this is with the installation of high visibility crosswalks and by installing these crosswalk ladders wherever new crosswalk markings are needed, uh, we will improve pedestrian safety. Studies show that high visibility crosswalk markings in some cases, slow drivers down up to 30 or 40 percent, percent and reduce collisions with uh, pedestrians. So today I'm going to be helping out our DDAC crew. And I know that residents all over the city are going to call to our attention um, all uh, that we need to do to improve markings on our street. And tomorrow uh, we'll be back talking about another Back to Basics uh initiative with DDOT, and that's Ali Palooza. But let me turn to Director Marushian uh, to talk about uh, our, side, our crosswalks project. Uh, before I do that, though, I do want to acknowledge our ANC commissioners who are here, Anthony Dale and Edward Daniels. Please give them a big round of applause. Thank you, commissioners. Director. Thank you so much, Mayor Bowser. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, I want to first thank the mayor for her continued leadership uh, and support of DDOT in all of the infrastructure improvement work uh, that we are making uh, all across the District of Columbia. I also want to thank Councilmember Allen for his support of these kinds of safety improvements as well. And finally, I want to thank all of our staff at DDOT who are working on these kinds of safety improvement projects, most especially the men and women who are behind us here who are doing uh, the installation of these pavement markings and high visibility crosswalks across all eight wards of the District of Columbia. Another paving season is here, and thanks to the support and leadership of the mayor and the support of the council, we have the resources to make improvements to our roads, sidewalks, and alleys in all eight wards of our city. Construction is already underway, and we fully expect to deliver a record amount of work this year. We're making these safety improvements with Vision Zero and Safety for Everybody in mind. And that's why all of these new crosswalks uh, that you see us installing here today uh, will be high-visibility, ladder-style crosswalks. These, as the mayor said, are designed to enhance pedestrian safety. We encourage residents to track our progress on our Pave DC website, uh, which for the first time includes pavement markings, crosswalks, and bike lanes. You can also keep tabs on our alley and sidewalk work as well. So it's going to be a busy summer for us. And I just want to uh, share that we are asking residents to please be on the lookout for our pavement work and for our striping work, and especially for our emergency no parking signs. We want our crews to be able to work and move as expeditiously as possible. And if there are vehicles parked on the street, it makes it difficult for the men and women to perform this work. So thank you again to the mayor. Uh, and I would now like to turn it over to Ward 6 Council Member Charles, Al Charles Allen. 
Thank you, Jeff. Um, and Ms. Mayor, thank you for picking Ward 6 to, to help put a focus on our crosswalks. I'm really glad to be here. Let me um, extend my thanks to our ANC commissioners that have been here, uh, Ed Daniels, as well as Anthony Dale, who was here. Also, uh, great neighborhood leadership. I saw Christine Spencer from James Creek over here. Thank you very much. Also, Cheryl Adams, uh, my person who represents me. There you go, on the Pedestrian Advisory Council. Um, efforts like this will help make our neighborhood safer. Unfortunately, we've seen around the country, um, not just here in D.C., but around the country, we've seen an increase in uh, pedestrian fatalities and injuries. So putting in something like this, a high-visibility crosswalk, we can't control for every driver's behavior, but making sure that it's bright, that it's visible, that it's well seen means that drivers will move slower. They'll look out for kids or for seniors or for others that are crossing our street. You look right across at a rec center. Making sure that our kids in the community can get back and forth safely is really important. And I'm really glad that the mayor has decided to help make this a bigger priority that I think uh, really we're launching these high visibility crosswalks all across the city. I think it's going to make a big difference. I think it's going to make our neighborhood safer. It's going to help us be able to cross our street safely. So I'm really proud to be here with the mayor and with Jeff and with everybody with DDOT because this is going to make a big difference for safety in our communities, and our neighborhoods. So I want to thank everybody for coming out and let's just do more of this. Thank you. Okay, I'll take a couple of questions, and then we're going to get to the demonstration. Questions, 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 questions? No questions? Uh, so civil officials are calling for Jack Evans to resign now that he's admitted he's violated the ethics code on the Metro, Metro Board. Where do you stand on his position there now? Um, I, will, I will have further discussions with Jack. That's it. That's my answer. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Um, I'm more concerned. I appreciate the streets and stuff, but I'm more concerned about our living conditions in 203. The mold and the lead. Okay. okay. Two is okay. That's your unit. The apartment building. Okay. Okay. The mold and the lead. <coughs> the the um project and the funds. Okay, I see that we have a representative of the Housing Authority. Why don't you come up and address that question? Good afternoon. I'm Hamaret Gabreas with the D.C. Housing Authority. We do have a plan to address all of the issues that are um, in our communities. And so we actually, in uh, this year, are getting some additional funds to address some of our major capital needs. So I'll be happy to chat with you further about some specific issues that you might have. Yeah. I was going to get some funds for the building of um, rebuilding at a gala I had attended, and you were there for affordable housing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, well, there were some decisions on the council to reduce some um, affordable housing dollars, but there's still substantial dollars that we'll put in use. Well, we do it every day, all day, uh, and, and putting units on the street. So, for example, uh, we uh, have a housing production trust fund, a housing preservation fund. Um, the housing authority has always had millions of dollars, uh, and now they have a, a new proposal for housing authority properties as well. The reason why I was asking because I was told that they don't have money to come in there and fix problems that have already occurred. Well, they do. I don't know what the whatever the immediate ma'am the immediate issues we're going to make sure that where's my team is going to talk to you about the immediate issues in your unit and we'll talk to the housing authority about your unit other units that are in terrible condition like the mold and the mill I got it as we traveling through the building we're in Helena all right, I'm going to have the Housing Authority's director talk to you directly, okay? Uh, Saturday marks the year anniversary of Metro's deadliest crash in Fort Totten. Uh, I think on the five-year anniversary, you had advocated for dedicated funding and hoped that, you know, the safety would improve to a point where this wouldn't happen again. Ten years removed, how do you evaluate where Metro's been and 
and will this could this possibly happen again? Uh, well, certainly we never want to see uh, a crash like that, and we've done everything in our power to make sure Metro has the resources it needs and the oversight uh, that it needs. Um, and it's no small task uh, that the Metro plan, rehabilitation plan, um, over the course of 15 years is going to be funded by the jurisdictions. Uh, and similarly, uh, you heard the young lady ask me questions about the housing authority and what it needs to do. Uh, and I have advocated for the housing authority and the government uh, to take a similar approach uh, to how we get to what the housing authority needs. It won't happen um, it won't happen without a plan of knowing what's happened and why the, the units have gotten into these conditions in the first place uh, and how we invest in it year to year with knowing where the source of funds is coming from. Uh, and so that will be what we continue to advocate uh, for the housing authority. I have to tell you, though, you hear the uh, concerns of these residents. I continue to have those concerns even with an infusion of funds, uh, a new chunk of money that's coming to the authority um, because what the residents want to know is how those funds are going to be used across all of the, the properties that are, um, that are experiencing the biggest problems. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.